Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us. It's great to have you with us again. As we begin to explore God's Word this morning, how about I pray and ask God to bless us as He seeks to reveal Himself to us this morning through His Word. Let's bow together. Father, we want to thank You for who You are. We want to thank You that You have revealed Yourself to us through Your Word, through creation, and most importantly, through your Son. Father, we thank you that as you reveal yourself to us, we are drawn to respond in worship of you, to acknowledge how great you are, to acknowledge your goodness and your mercy. And so, Father, this morning as we come together in this medium, on this video, Father, I ask that you would open our hearts and minds to reveal more of yourself to us, that we might be challenged to grow and to share together as we seek to be like Jesus. We ask this for his sake. Amen. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we introduced a series looking at practicing the practices of Jesus. And that idea that as we seek to follow him, as we seek to be like Jesus, that we might learn to do the things he did. But not for the sake of just doing what he did, but also to understand why and the importance of that so that we might apply those principles into our own lives. Neil Hudson uh, from the UK says that a disciple is someone who is learning the way of Jesus in their particular context at this particular moment in time. What he's saying is that as disciples, we're always learning. As people who seek to follow Jesus, we're always growing and learning what it means to represent and to reflect Jesus right here, right now, in this context, in this moment in whatever the circumstances that are happening around us are. And that's the heart with which we want to come to this series, to always be uh, wanting to grow and to learn what it means to follow Jesus at this point in our lives, at this point in time. Now, we looked a couple of weeks ago at this idea of worship and started to explore that a little bit. We saw that worship is about an action-reaction, or more accurately, a revelation and response to God. God reveals himself to us through the scriptures, through the creation and the world around us, through his son, Jesus. And as he reveals himself to us, we respond, we're drawn to respond to him. And, uh, and to worship him and to reveal his worth and to recognize his goodness to us. The more we do that, the more he reveals of himself, the more we're drawn into worship. And there's a, a deepening cycle, if you like, of how we engage with him. We also saw in that uh, video a couple of weeks ago that this is a vertical plane. In a sense, our reaction and our response to God, our, our worship of God takes place internally for us. It changes us inwardly as we have an inward response to who God is. But we also realize that that then evokes in us an outward response to the world around us. And James talks about how our faith without works is dead and that our faith our works needs to express itself from our faith, that it's from our relationship with God, not for our relationship with God, that the inward focus that we have that transforms and changes us by the renewing of our mind works out into the changing of our relationships with those around us. We recognize that that's part of the Imago Day, becoming in the image of God and the Missio Day, the mission of God into the world. So what we want to do is take that a little bit further today, because we saw last time that everything we do becomes an act of worship. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, Paul encourages us that all we do, we do to the glory of God, that everything becomes an act of worship for us. But there's a second aspect to our worship we want to explore today, and that is the relationship between our gathered worship and our scattered worship. We gather together as church in Sunday services, in home groups, in various other places and various other times throughout the week to gather for worship. But we also scatter in worship as we fulfill our lives and engage in all the different places that we go. We're both church gathered and church scattered. Now, Peter reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, he says, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
Peter reminds us that as church, we are living stones in Christ, being built into a place of sacrifice and worship. We are church 24-7, every day, every moment of every day. But we gather together for a few hours a week, three or four or five hours. But we're then also church scattered throughout our community for the other 165 hours or so a week that we aren't gathered. And that remember, everything we do is an act of worship. And so thus our worship is a giving of worth to God in our gathering and in our scattering. It's a recognition of what happens both when we gather together and when we scatter. And it's important for us to understand that. See, our gathered life is to sustain us and to equip us for our life scattered. That as we gather together as God's people, he prepares us for our scattering throughout the week. Our gathered worship is to spark our imaginations. Our gathered worship is to broaden our perspectives. Our gathered worship is to inspire us in light of our front lines, those places where we spend our time regularly with people who don't know Jesus yet. In his book, Above the Line, Peter McHugh refers to this idea as the locker room. There are four things that uh, we learn in a locker room. So to, to take a football analogy, Uh, For us here in Warwick, that's mainly rugby league, but it applies across the board. There are four things you learn as you gather together in the locker room at training uh, in preparation for the game. You learn skills. When you come to training, when you gather in the locker room, you go through the basic drills of how to kick the ball, how to pass the ball, how to run, how to tackle. All those basic skills that we need to have to play the game of football, to play the game of rugby league, we learn at training in the locker room. The second thing we learn in the locker room is strategy. We learn the rules of the game. We learn how to do that effectively. We learn how to create plays that might um, confound the opposition and and it'll give us an opportunity to score. We learn the strategy of how to defend properly. So there's both the offensive and the defensive strategies that need to come into the game as we play. We learn those in the locker room. We learn those at training. We learn those as we gather together in that space. The third thing we learn as part of the locker room is stamina. We train, we run, We've got to do laps, we've got to do push-ups, we've got to do tackling drills, we've got to do fitness and conditioning training. We do weights in the gym. All those sorts of things that build us up, that help us to become fit and ready to be able to last the full 80 minutes of the game. We learn stamina, resilience. And then the fourth thing we learn in the locker room and we do in the locker room is around sustenance. That's that idea of having our injuries tended to, having our body strapped and prepared, ready in order to minimize our injuries, to recover from the injuries that we might have sustained as we've played the game, to bring healing and wholeness to our bodies as we prepare to play the game. You see, that's the purpose of the locker room. The purpose of the locker room is to play the game. The purpose of our gathering as church is for the purpose of scattering throughout our community as we represent, as we reflect him. So our gathered worship, the things we do together as we gather in church together, are to prepare us for the worship that we will bring, our acts of worshipping God in everything we do, glorifying him in everything we do, out in our communities for the rest of our week. But see, just like playing football, if we only ever gather in the locker room, then we're not really playing football, are we? And in the same way, if we only ever scatter out on the field and play the game and never come back into the locker room, then we can't do that for very long. You see, if we only gather as church, if we only worship in our gathering together and we ignore God, through the rest of our week, we're not really saved. We're not really Christians. We're not really living our lives as disciples, as followers of Jesus. 
Likewise, if we're only ever out in the community and we're only ever scattered throughout our community and we're seeking to do things there, but we never actually meet together with God's people. Again, we're missing that aspect of what it truly means to be a follower of Jesus. One of the things that happens when we play the game is that we'll go out for the first half and we'll play the game, but we come back in at half time. And that's when the coach gives us a pep talk. That's when he says to us, hey, these are the things that I've noticed. These are the holes in the opposition's defences that we might exploit. These are the areas where our game is not up to scratch and we need to work on and we need to practice and we need to prepare for this. That as we then go back out into the, the field again for the second half, we're able to play more effectively. We've all seen those games where in the first half our, our team is playing rubbish and they're being you know, beaten in every aspect all over the park. They come in at half time. And obviously the coach has given them a real rev and a real surf because they come out in the second half and they're like a completely different team and they end up winning the match. You see, church gathered for us can be like that, where we come back together when we realize our faults, when we realize the areas that we're struggling in. We encourage one another. We support one another. We build one another up. We come in contact with God. We allow him to input into our lives. We allow him to speak into us, to challenge us, to shape us, and to grow us, so that when we head out back into the world for the rest of the week, we then are able to be more effective for him in that space. You see, we need both. We need to have our gathered worship informing our daily scattering. We need to have the coming together as his people, as a gathered church, to influence us, to change us, to shape us, to equip us, to ready for us for when we scatter throughout the rest of the week. In Amos chapter 5, we get a glimpse of what um, God is wanting to say to Israel at this time. And it, it's a criticism. God is having a, 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 he's chastising Israel because of the way that they're living their lives. He says, I hate, this is verse 21 of Amos chapter 5. He says, I hate, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring me choice fellowship offerings, I have no regard for them. Away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. You see, one of the things that had happened for Israel at this point in their history is they'd had this disconnect between their gathered worship and their scattered worship. They had come together, they were bringing their offerings, they were bringing their, their, um, their sacrifices to the Lord. They were doing all of that by the letter of the law. They were coming together and singing their songs and doing their worship, gathered. But when they walked out of the building, it was almost like they were multiple personalities because they left the building and they forgot that what they did in the rest of their week was worship as well. They failed to acknowledge those who were struggling. They failed to regard those who were poor and oppressed. They, they didn't follow through the worship of God into their scattering. Kent Anderson writes this. He says that God's anger mediated through Amos is still directed towards worshippers like us who are comfortable in the sanctuary and uncaring in the street passionate with the congregation in singing hymns, but indifferent to the poor in their struggle for food, caught up in mystical spirituality in worship, but we leave God where, there as we go to work. Amos expects integral worship, an authentic connection between the sanctuary and the courtroom, worship centre and marketplace, church and society. You see, the sort of worship that Amos is challenging Israel to and challenging us to is a worship that's authentic, that what happens when we gather also influences and equips us and changes the way we engage in our world as we scatter. So as we look at worship, there are these two aspects. There's that vertical aspect that we looked at last time of the internal external, that as God reveals himself to us and we respond to him in worship, that he changes us. Romans 12, 1 and 2. 
that we're transformed by the renewing of our minds as we offer ourselves as living sacrifices to him, that we are changed because we've been in relationship and in worship with God as he's revealed himself to us and we've responded to that. And that then needs to work its way out into the way we live our lives, both as gathered church, that as we come together on Sunday mornings, in home groups during the week, in other places, that we worship together in order to be prepared for the scattering that we do through our community and the worship of God that we bring as all we do, we do for the glory of God throughout our week as we scatter. Neil Hudson says, it's the power of and, the impact of all that can happen when our scattered lives as church are intrinsically linked to our gathered life as a church community. As our lives are brought together and we gather together in him, we're intrinsically changed and equipped to work out into our world and to be a part of all that God is doing among us. So how is your locker room experience? How are you playing the game? See, the challenge for us then this morning is this, that as we engage with God, both at a personal level, internally, externally, that inward, outward focus of our worship with him as an individual, there's also that aspect of how when we gather and scatter, our worship continues. How is our gathering equipping us for our scattering? How is the stuff that we do on Sunday as we gather as church equipping us for Monday through to Saturday? Now, that's something that we're working on. That's something that we as a church are seeking to be better at. That's something that as we come out of COVID restrictions and we begin to gather together again, we want to focus more clearly on how that gathering draws us together and equips us for the worship that we bring as we scatter through our community through the rest of the week. My prayer is that as we learn what it means to worship God, both for ourselves, but corporately as a church, as we gather together, that that impacts us as we worship him in our scatteredness throughout the rest of the week. Let's pray together and ask God's help to do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you encourage us just as as Amos did, to make sure that our relationship with you as we gather together is not only right and holy and proper and builds us up and brings glory and worth to you, but Father, that would influence us and change us and shape the way we interact with our world. Father, we would see that intrinsic link between the church gathered and worship as the church gathered and worship as the church scattered that we would be inspired by our gathering as we step out into our community and seek to represent you and to worship you through the living of our lives. Father, we pray that you would continue to grow us as disciples, as those who are learning what it means to worship you, to follow you, to live like Jesus at this moment, in this context, at this point in our lives. Father, would you help us to do that as we seek to engage you in your revelation and our response to that in our worship today. We ask this in his name. Amen. Again, let me thank you for joining with us this morning as we've shared this video with you. I trust that you're being challenged by that and that God is speaking to you in that. Can I remind you to hit the subscribe button and to hit the bell icon so that you are notified when there are new videos that come out. And we look forward to being able to gather together soon. Our commitment is that as we come back together and regather coming out of COVID restrictions, that we would continue to maintain an online presence so that you might connect in and continue to be be blessed as God speaks to you through these videos we trust. Thanks very much for joining us. Have a great week.